sing a sack of flour, make a whole cake every hour. Eat that skillet good and breezy all the time, time, time. Eat that skillet good and breezy all the time. Welcome to my kitchen. This is, I don't know how many episodes we already made of this, uh, uh, produced of this cook show, but uh, we're enjoying it more and more because we're really having a lot of fun sitting here. Yeah. And it seems like every time we have the cook show, the weather is nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna have today, Uwe? Uh, we will, I found some beautiful lamb. So this is lamb shoulder. Well, you, you can do the same recipe with, uh, with beef. So we're gonna have a, a braised beef or braised lamb shoulder with fried potatoes, German style, and the tomatoes that we, that you remember when we had them back in Switzerland. It's a typical thing that we do in the winter with hot half of house tomatoes. So yeah. we, ba we bake the tomatoes. Yes, exactly. So, so it's baked tomatoes and uh, uh, well, yeah, that, yeah, let's go through, over, over, through the ingredients. Okay, let's look at the ingredients for today. Um, this is a lot of ingredients, but you have probably everything at home anyway, uh, most of the time. So we need some olive oil, we need the herbs, you know, we need some uh, 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 herb de Provence and some uh, uh, thyme. They, they, that really, the company, you know, thyme is so good with lamb, it really works great with the, with the garlic. It just tastes fantastic. We need some aroma, pepper, salt and uh, uh, clarified butter. You know, uh, we need that for the for the potatoes yes. that we're gonna make. We also have on this side, we have some green onions and we need a little bit of flour. I got some hot house tomatoes, uh, breadcrumbs. We got some panko here. You can use just the normal, whatever you got. Uh, shallots, garlic, fresh parsley. And I got about two pounds of lamb shoulder which you can substitute with, with beef or, or pork, whatever you feel like. Uh, and that's great. You know, so. Mm -hmm. We also need a little bit of cognac, uh, mm -hmm. just a little bit. We're not gonna use this bottle, I promise. Uh, so we, we just go, put it, and a little bit of wine, but this is optional. Like I said, you know, we don't wanna force alcohol on you with these recipes, uh, but really uh, just a little bit, you know, just makes it taste so good. And we have, we have pre-cooked pre, uh, some potatoes uh, yesterday, uh, we just boiled them in water and, and just let them cool off, uh, so they're ready for our fried potatoes. I think that's about it. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. And of course, since we cook meat, we need some knives. Yes, uh, uh, and Jens, Jens is short on knives. Um, I see he's missing a few a few sizes. Yes, I know. Uh, but I think for, for to, I, I'm going to start off. Uh, what are you going to start off? You want to, you want to start, start, start off with the meat. Yeah, why don't you start, start, start with the meat? Right? That's, 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 I'm gonna, just going to cut this onion off. So I'm starting with the meat. Lamb tends to be very fatty, so I'm going to try to get some of the of the fat out, the, the worst parts, um, before before I, I cook it. Right? Some of this up, but yeah, leave it on there. And... Uh, Cut it into little bits like that. I think I'm gonna take this, yeah, this, this, this out here. Need a knife? Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, just just half the onion. And Uwe just wants to have it framed like this. And I think what we're gonna do with this with these onions is we're gonna fry them together with the potatoes. Um, you know, in a, in a big big frying pan. So it's not a bit. Machst du noch Zwiebeln rein für die? Gonna peel me some garlic. Uh, just like we always do. Make sure that you got plenty because we need a lot of garlic for the, for the lamb. <laughs> this knife here, it's been with me a long time. I got this, I got this little knife from my uncle and you see it's damaged, but got this little knife when, for my baptizing. Um, so it's been around a while. And then 
Later, I don't know what, what I was doing. I was, was outside. I was using the knife for something. I don't know, maybe I was whittling or something. It's pretty sharp. sharp. So I lost it out in the meadow and uh, behind the house. And I could never find it again. But years, many years later, my stepmother, all of a sudden, she came and she said, Oh, I've, we found this knife. Because they were building houses on that meadow, they were sort of digging and they all of a sudden found this knife and it had my name on it. And so they asked the, the, the neighbor's house, you know, where my, my, my stepmother was living, uh, do you know anybody with that name Jens? And she said, yeah, of course. And see, here's MK, that means Martin Kruger. So I got it from my uncle. So, and then I got it back. So I still have it. <laughs> and it was laying Beautiful. outside for so many years, you know, somewhere in the meadow. <laughs> Jens is talking about knives and knives are so important for for, for cooking and everything else. Uh, we have a huge collection. I Like today, I'm using this old French knife that I've been using. Laguiole, Laguiole. Um, this is probably made in the 50s, and it's not it's not stainless, but they're just wonderful. They're, they handle well, and, and they are just great little knives. Um, knives have histories. Um, when you when you work with them a long time, you get used to a certain knife, and then you sharpen it, and it changes, and it becomes part of your routine. It's just wonderful things to have good knives. They don't need to be expensive. One of my favorite knives is a Japanese knife I bought for five dollars, and I've been using it for thirty years, and and it's still sharp as it was when I bought it. It's just amazing. Don't spend too much money on knives, please. While Jens is back there changing something on his banjo, I got the onions ready for the Bratkartoffeln, for the fried potatoes. And what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to tell anybody, but I'm going to sneak one clove of garlic in there. It always makes the potatoes a little nicer. I'm peeling the boiled potatoes, and I really love my Victorinox knife for that. The one with the serrations. I can just take this off like that. Makes it a very easy job. And when I'm done peeling it, I cut it in cubes, right straight into the pan, not too small because they're going to fall apart otherwise, okay? All right, it's about time to fry the meat. What we're going to do with the meat is we're just going to uh, really high temperature, you know, just fry it real quick, just to close it up, everything, and then we put it in a, um, in a little... Bacon sheet. Bacon sheet. Yeah, that's that's the name. And we just put it in the oven and let it finish there. Well, while this is getting hot, you know, I have time. I can pour myself a little bit of wine because it's just such a beautiful feeling being in the kitchen and having a glass of wine. Mm. I think this is hot enough. So I'm just going to put the, the meat in here. I don't need to put any oil in here, you know. So I don't want to get the I don't want the frying pan to get too cold. So I don't put too much in. I just you know sort of half the batch. <laughs> Wait till till it's done. Yeah. Now I'm gonna put some salt over it. Pepper. some of my herbs. Now that the meat has been hot, you know, you can see that the fat is now coming out a little bit. And that's when I want to put my my uh, herbs in. Because if I put them in from the beginning, there's a chance I'm just going to burn them. So I, so the temperature is hot, but not too hot, so it looks good. So I can take some of these herbs and put them on here. I like the herb to promote because uh, of the lavender that's in, in there. Now I got the garlic ready. Yeah, uh, we'll put the garlic in here. That's Half good. of it. Yeah. 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 So with, the, with these herbs, I really don't hesitate. As you can see, I'll put on a lot because the, uh, the lamb can really use it. Now with the garlic, you can see it starts to look really, really good. Mmm. Smells heavenly. 
herbs, you know, I, I put on, I take time, and you could take fresh time, but the, but this dried time is good. So, and there again, I, I'm quite generous with this because it's just, just so wonderful. Because lamb is a strong tasting meat, and you can also put a lot of uh, herbs on it. Just a little bit more and then we're done with this first batch. So all I do is I'm just going to put it here on this baking sheet. Just let it sit here. That's all good. Now I just have to clean out the pan just a little bit <laughs> so I don't burn too much. Like this. Okay. potatoes now in the pan and I'm going to cut some parsley. Um, you can use dried parsley, freeze-dried parsley. I like fresh when I can. I'm not getting any. And so that's but it's very important. And I'm going to put the parsley in right from the beginning to um, so it can really nicely go along with the potatoes. And I put in a a nice big piece of butter, something like that. And as soon as Jens is done with the lamb over there, I can start the potatoes. Well, Uwe had the idea that we take some green onions and chop them up and then just sort of spread them, spread them over, over the lamb before we put it in the oven. That really is a nice idea. Also, you know, maybe we can just put add a little bit of cognac, you know, you know, just to put. I, I would put the, the wine in now. Just a tad. Just a tad. Let's put a little bit of wine in there. Yeah. Wine is always good. Okay. Just a little bit. Yeah. That's it. I think temperature can go up a little bit. Let's go here. Make. My potatoes are going to the to the range now. So um, I need to put some salt on here too, enough. And, and enough salt. I'm taking, you know, wow, it's pota a no po bad. potatoes can hardly be too salty. Uh, That's the thing about it. You know? Okay, now to get the, the water underneath and start. Let it sit here for a second and wait until they start to make noise. I'm gonna peel me a couple of shallots for the sauce. We can, we can start doing that soon. We have to really cut them finely. <laughs> Careful to turn the temperature down 
on your potatoes after you initially start getting them that you get warm. What we want them to do is to dry out at the same time as caramelize the onion. So it's going to take a moment. And you've got to be careful not to move them too much. Just trust it. We're going to start our, our sauce. Uh, we're going to start with a little bit of um, butter. And start with the shallots. Okay, let's let's uh, get the tomatoes ready because I'm, I was playing and noodling around, and it's, it's actually I almost forgot. So uh, I'm just gonna cut the. I washed them before. Just gonna cut them in half like this, just like that. And uh, mm -hmm. what I first do is I'm gonna put a little aromat on every on every every tomato right before I put anything else on it, like that. Mmm, ah, that's typical Swiss, I know. Then I take some butter, and I take some, some butter flakes, oh, like this, put it on top, on each tomato. Some of these breadcrumbs, and I'm just gonna sprinkle some of these breadcrumbs on top of the butter. Yes, just like that. <laughs> okay, before I put them in, I just poked through everything with the knife a little bit, you know, so the butter can go into the tomatoes. I forgot to do that in the beginning, but you can, you know, just do it again. I just do it. So. Um, Throw this in here as well. My shallots were done. I put a little bit of red wine in there, reduced it, and a little bit of water and a little bit of of my um, um, vegetable vegetable um, yeah. bouillon. And a little bit more wine. Then <laughs> reduce nicely. The potatoes are coming along nicely too. So you see, other people watch TV. Jens and you watch this. <laughs> because it's, it's just wonderful. Um, see. It actually, it smells good and it looks good. But you know, you wouldn't believe how, how nervous we are producing these cook shows. Because like I always say this, this claim, we're not real chefs. We just like to cook. And so every time we cook, it's like a try. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not really sure, but it, most of the time it works pretty well, but so. But in, it's always, you know, when you want to show it, oh, it goes is, wrong. It, is it going to go well or not, you know? Yeah. But we can always pretend it tastes good because, you know, you, nobody knows. But most of the time it was good, was it? Yes. Well, it's not, yes. Can you pass it the pepper? Yes. You want to put some Yeah, put some fresh pepper in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think need a little bit more red wine, and it can never have enough. I think red wine is important. Yes. You know, a little bit of red wine is good. Yes. More red wine is more better. It's more good. Okay. That's it. <laughs> here goes the Remy Martin. I put a little bit of a cognac in here. Just a shot glass full, maybe. Because it's a cognac sauce. So. Yeah, a cognac. And we have to make sure to burn out the alcohol again. You see this this bottle here, Remy Montaigne. It's actually it's a good cognac. I mean, it's a champagne cognac, but you can take any cognac, you know. Uh, or you can take Calvados. Yes. But or I remember our father. He, he once brought back one of these bottles to my family, to our family at Christmas. <laughs> and you know, in Northern, in Northern Germany, people drink uh, corn. You know, it's like gin. And what they do, they put it in the freezer, and it comes out like oil. And you drink it in little. Sh <laughs> now they took this cognac that you're supposed to, you know, really enjoy and, you know, and a nice temperature in the real cognac glasses. But <laughs> our family, they were such barbarians, you know. <laughs> they were, and you can see, you know, we're from bar barbarian stock. <laughs> so we, 
So they took this expensive bottle of French cognac and stuck it in the freezer. And then they drank it as little shots before dinner. And, <laughs> and, and, and the bottle was gone. Of course, there was a lot of people. But I remember that our father was so upset because it cost a lot of money to get French cognac in those days. But anyway, so here we, we go. We, we got to cheat a little bit. We got to yeah. we got to use a little bit of flour. Yeah, a little bit of flour. To thicken to, it. Just to thicken it up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, and that's just to get up. That's and maybe good. some fresh butter. You know, that's what we need the fresh butter for. So. Because we, we noticed in our last two two meals, the calorie count was down. Yeah, we have to make up for that. Yeah, the calorie count was way down. And uh, so we got we got you know help it a little bit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. A little bit more. So when you do the potatoes, don't be afraid to burn them just a little bit. That gives them a, a real good good flavor. You see what? Why do you burn them? Well, see if you burn just no, a tad, no, just a little don't bit. Burn them. Oh yes, that is the secret. To good fried potatoes, a little bit of burning. It's like this husband, you know, he always was unhappy with the cooking of his wife because he had a wife before and she cooked really good. And then one day he, he cooked it and it, he said, it's perfect. And she was very worried because it was all burnt. And he said, you know, I really do like that part between the raw and the burnt. <laughs> I think we'd rather play. Yeah. But first, uh... <laughs> Without the glasses, 
I don't see good, but I smell better. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, the potatoes, my goodness. Look at these. Uh, I think these potatoes love my frying pan. What do you think, Uwe? Mm, you want to play one more? In Germany, my aunts and my, my mother and my grandmother, they used to sing songs in the kitchen. You remember? Oh, yeah. And they always had these bloody stories about people getting murdered and, 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 and husbands that ran away and all these things. You remember that? So, Mariechen war ein Frauenzimmer gar hold und togen. There's one that's a little bit like that. You, know, it's, you, you have to sing it as a girl. So. <laughs>
have forgotten potatoes we only also have forgotten tomatoes uh, let's see how they look what do you think ah with the french knife uh, oh hot, hot hot look at this they start looking oh look at that ah, oh they're good they're good that's good ah you know what i'm gonna do ah. you want to try a piece of meat yet to see how it looks good yeah yeah let's see ah. It's not good. Not good. No. I have to eat it all myself. Oh. I'm sorry, Uwe. <laughs> it's, not, it's not good at all. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it on broil real quick. High broil. Just really sort of, you know, I want to crisp it up on top a little bit. Just for a little while. You know, maybe for a for an hour and a half or so. Okay. <laughs> well, when Earl Scruggs, you know, I had the Earl Scruggs book, and I remember I bought it in Munich, and I couldn't. First of all, I couldn't read English, and secondly, I couldn't. I didn't know what tablature was and how it worked, and so I bought the Scruggs book, and then I put it in a locker in the railway station in Zurich uh, because I had to play on the streets. I needed to leave my stuff somewhere, and then I lost the key. So I actually never actually got to learn anything from the Earl Scruggs, you know, book because uh, I was afraid to go there because I thought they would charge me for the key I lost. But then I, uh, years later I had it of course, and uh, Earl Scruggs, you know, wrote in the book, I think in the back of how he discovered to play, you know, for himself, three finger style. There were other players who played, you know, with three fingers, uh, with finger picks, but he really perfected it. And he had one tune that he, the Rubens train, but he used a roll. Like that, and then he played Rubens train. Oh. Uh, wanna play a little bit? Close. Yeah. I think. Let's see. Ah, oh, yes. 
But it's still good. It's good. It's still good. Yes, it's good. Oh, wait, what do you think? Perfect. We're ready? Yeah. Ready. Wow, look at the smoke in here. There was so much hectic. Nino escaped. Now he's back. Oh, little Nino is back. Oh, now it's good. Okay, everything's fine. Don't worry. That's all good. So, we're going to prepare a, 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 a plate for Uwe because uh, Melissa doesn't like lamb. And uh, we don't want to force her to eat anything she doesn't enjoy. So let's put a tomato on here. Uh, some of this meat. Doesn't this look great? It does look good. Yeah, it really does look good. All this meat. And then the potatoes, of course. Like this. Hmm. I think this looks pretty nice. A little bit sauce. of sauce. Yes, of yeah. course. Yes. And here we get the sauce. You want the sauce on the meat? Just a little bit on the potato, between the meat and the potato. Okay, I'm going to start putting it right here. A little bit of Just the sauce. Yeah, that's it. Mm. This looks like a wonderful meal. Jens, you did great with the, with the, the, the lamb. The lamb is really nice and tender. Mmm. Mmm. We did, it, we did it justice. Oh, and oh. here we have the potatoes. Oh, this, I just love those potatoes. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, not not too much salt. They're they're not, yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah. Mm. And your tomato. Well, the tomato is just something we always had in Switzerland. Well, be careful, Scott. Mmm. What a combination. I hope that you try this, folks. This is really good. How we say in Swiss German? And good with All right. <laughs> this was a little bit chaotic, was it? Yes, and we had purple haze in the in the kitchen. Yeah, it looked it yes. really it really felt like a train went through this kitchen. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I hope we didn't wreck and the, the, the food is delicious. I hope that you're gonna join us again for our regular shows next yes, week. Yes, absolutely. And and we're gonna be back. Send us some um, some comments and and suggestions on YouTube and Facebook, that'd be wonderful. We're here for you, we love doing this. Thank you so much <laughs> for watching. Take care. Bye, bye bye, have a beautiful Sunday. Bye bye, bye bye.